Rim Country Forum today being brought to you by Banner Payson Medical Center, George Henry Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, At Your Service Cleaning and Tree Service, ITD Group Computer Services, and Anytime Fitness. Oh, good golly, I don't have our intro music, so... Hey, it's time for our hometown movie, guys. Sorry, guys, I messed up and I don't have our music this morning. But nonetheless, Tina, Craig, and Andy are with us in the studio, ready to reveal all kinds of scintillating information about everything they know about movies and even a little bit more. Right here on Rim Country Forum. You're not going to say anything, or are you just going to sit there and stare at me? We're waiting. Oh, we're yes. ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Boy, grumpy we're, people here in the morning, I tell you. <laughs> well, you know, it's just one of those things that every once in a while, you know, i just got too many things going on here. So, But the nice part is, is by sitting here babbling for just a moment, I've actually come up with a solution to the whole dilemma, and that is, there. All right, now, All right. with a proper introduction, for people with egos bigger than the country of New Zealand, or, I don't know, maybe, maybe Rhode Island, I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hometown movie, guys. All right, we got the music in there. I went around on the computer while talking. It's an interesting thing. Or maybe Schenectady. 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 Not to be confused with Poughkeepsie. You said that very well. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, it's a good word. Now yeah. if you I can try just to work it into conversation <laughs> as often as I can. Now if you could just work on uh, Keanu Reeves, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, anyway, this morning on Rim Country Forum, got a lot of uh, great uh, things to tell you about going on at the Sawmill Theaters. And, and before we get into everything, you know, get some new movies uh, starting today, and it all sounds great. But before we do that, uh, I'm going to talk about something real quick here with uh, Craig. And that, you know, during the summer, sometimes you know the kids are sitting around and they don't want to admit that they miss being in school, but uh, they're, you know, they suddenly like, what am I going to do? I'm bored. Nothing to do. You got something great for kids to do this summer at the yeah. Sunnel Theaters. Yes, we're going to start up a uh, summer movie program. Ah. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we'll start this next Thursday. Mm -hmm. It'll be the first one, but 10:30 a.m. Uh, we're going to play Monsters Inc. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to start up some classic kids movies. Uh, we'll do those 10:30 in the morning, and it's going to be just five bucks to get in, and that is going to include a small drink and a small popcorn. Very cool. So we're going to do that. Uh, so next Thursday will be Monsters, Inc. Five bucks to get a movie, they get popcorn and a drink. And a drink, yes. Wow. Yes. That sounds like a great And thing. then the following week we're going to go with Happy Feet and... Oh, the penguin thing. And Surf's Up. Yeah, kind of do a little penguin thing there. Cool. And then the following week would be Shrek 1 and Shrek 2. Wow. It'll so, be a Shrek-y week. Yeah. So um, we're, we're going to, you know, we'll come out with more details on this stuff and we'll get it in the paper and everything too. So It'll be on uh, so, Mondays so people, and Thursdays. Mondays and Thursdays, but we're now... Not next Monday. We're going to actually right. start next, next Thursday. Thursday. So next and, Thursday, and, Monsters Inc. And nine o'clock. Ten thirty. Ten thirty. Ten thirty. So uh, enough time for you know kids to you know get out of bed, get their yeah, cereal, eat, and all that kind of good stuff. Everyone sleep in a little bit. And, yeah. yeah, gotta love it. That sounds like a lot of fun and a good thing for the kids. So, if be thinking ahead of time, if you think your kids are uh, going to need something extra fun to do this uh, uh, summer vacation, Mondays and Thursdays, starting next Thursday, uh, the place to be, the Sawmill Theaters. Now, uh, uh, of course, there's been a lot of great things playing at the, uh, the Sawmill Theaters, and uh, I want to do these in, in reverse order today and talk about some of the ones that have been here for a while. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum, uh, that's at, uh, uh, the next in the John Wick series, Super Assassin. John Wick is on, a, on the run with a $14 million price tag on his head. He's the target of men and women everywhere. Hey, it's rated R. This is not one for the kids. It's a big bang up, shoot 'em up uh, sort of thing. Plays at 115, 415, and 715. How's that been doing? It's doing well. Yeah, well. And then uh, box offices nationwide. Uh, uh, Andy, what's what's the latest on the numbers that they've been generating? Uh, yeah, John Wick. John Wick is doing just fine. Uh, they <clears throat> they spent uh, 60 million bucks to make it, wow. and it's a much larger uh, budget than uh, they've had at the other John Wick movies. Hmm. Uh, uh, but it's brought in. Uh, 187 million at the box office. So uh, 187 million. Yeah, the producers are happy, happy, happy. And you talk about happy feet. Boy, oh boy, producers got happy feet for John Wick. Smiling all the way to the bank on yeah. that one. And, and boy, it, I, I saw it, and it, it's just loads of fun. Uh, John Wick is running around. He's got everybody in the world trying to kill him, and and, and really trying hard. Not. <clears throat> you know, no, no uh, half-hearted efforts uh, on this at all. They're, they're really pretty darn serious about getting that 14 million bucks. Wow. 
Very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's and, fun. It's fun. And again, that plays at 115, 415, and 715. I mean, if you like seeing bad guys getting greased, you know, by the carload, well, wholesale lots if of you're, bad guys <laughs> stacked up every which way. And if you're, you know, going to watch people get waxed, then you might as well be, you know, bad guys. Yeah. Gotta love it. Also, uh, another movie playing, uh, it's rated PG, so this is good for everyone. It's uh, called A Dog's Journey. A dog finds the meaning of his own existence through the lives of the humans he meets. And um, now this has, what, been two weeks on this one, uh, Craig? Two or three? Uh, started its third week now. All right. And how's that been doing? It's done good, too. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it sounds like a nice feel-good movie. It's kind of a, it is, you know, yes. uh, because our dogs don't live very long, you know, it's, and it's always a sad thing when they leave us, the idea, the premise behind this is that the dog actually gets reincarnated and comes back as another yeah. dog. Yes, yeah, kind of follows through the, right. the same family and, and, and goes through that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, interesting. I'll probably come back as a Chihuahua. Um, but at any rate, uh, that sounds like it'd be fun. Have you seen that one yet, uh, Tina? No. In a word? No. Okay. Are you grumpy this morning? No. All right. We, we can change that. Um, also, uh, now one that I've, I've seen the trailers for but have not seen the movie yet, and I know it's been doing uh, just amazing things in the box office, and that's Aladdin. Now, um, this plays at 1, 4, and 7. And uh, let's see, uh, at 1 o'clock you can watch it in 2D and 3D, 4 o'clock is 2D only, and 7 o'clock in 2D and 3D. And uh, uh, it's a, you've got, uh, 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 just like that, his name escapes me. Will Smith. Will Smith, yes. Um, and uh, it, it, it's pretty interesting. I don't know, you know, they got a lot of CG or something going on in this movie, but he plays a, a pretty cool, big, huge, blue genie. He plays a genie, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, well, this is a remake of the... 1992 or 93 Aladdin film, right? And uh, uh, this is a live action version and of it. And some of the same music for those that some of the same. Songs. And that's what this really is. It's it's a uh, you know in the in the style of these Disney classics. It's a, a whole uh, new world. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, yeah. Lots of singing and dancing and uh, a PG rated film, and it's been doing great. Outstanding. And uh, uh, well, Andy, have you seen this one? Uh, nope. So, let's well, uh, two for two out of our movie but, critics this but, morning. But nevertheless, uh, yeah. I did see Don Wick. So. Oh, is that right? <laughs> and, and what did you think about that? Uh, other than that there's a lot of bad people being, you know... Oh, I, I, I thought John, John Wick's... I, I love the John Wick movies. Yeah. I just think they're loads of fun. It, that's one of those things where it's just so action-packed. I mean, you, it, you know, it just never stops, from what I've heard. Uh, no, no. He just kind of shakes off one horrible beating or stabbing or shooting or something and patches himself up briefly and then right into another one. Uh, but uh, Aladdin is a, a, a really big deal, uh, directed by Guy Ritchie, by the way. Oh, cool. um, really? And uh, Guy Ritchie, uh, in his early career, uh, made movies that were just fabulous, yeah. uh, including one called Lock Stock and two smoking barrels. Yes, uh, which is on either Prime or Netflix, I can't remember, but I, I keep meaning to rewatch it. It's very funny. Really mm -hmm. interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. just it, it, spectacular, funny, uh, completely off-the-wall stuff. And so has Aladdin been doing good at the box office? Uh, yeah, Aladdin's been doing fine. It's been out for a week, 183 million bucks, which is a lot of money. I'm, I'm sorry, 275 million at the box office. Well, that's even a lot more money. Uh, yeah, 183 uh, uh, budget, so it's a really big, big budget movie. Uh, but uh, guess who was in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels? I give up. That is important for us this week hmm. at the Sawmill Theaters. Dexter Fletcher. And Dexter Fletcher is the director of Rocket Man. Oh, ah, okay. Another movie we're going to talk about in yeah. just a minute. Before we stop talking about Aladdin, though, we need to also mention that um, there's going to be a special showing of this uh, tomorrow, right, Fred? Yes, yeah. We have a fundraiser tomorrow for uh, Hewlett County Scholarships. All right, so uh, proceeds from this go on to help with uh, scholarships from the Hewlett County Community College. Yes, it, it's five dollars to get in to see it, and that whole five dollars goes to those local scholarships. How cool is that? That's you guys uh, always doing good things for the community that way. Hats off to you. Try to keep it, yeah, we try to keep things going like that. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's at ten o'clock tomorrow morning. So uh, you can get in there for just five bucks, ten o'clock tomorrow morning, and then uh, while we're at it, uh, at nine o'clock tomorrow morning, you got another thing going on there. We got the classic movie. Oh yeah, that's right, My Fair Lady. My Fair Lady, and we're gonna do that one at nine o'clock, 
And you know, um, one of the cool things about uh, My Fair Lady is a three hour movie. Yes, it runs a little bit long. That's why we we got the nine o'clock yeah. showing. But and so it's great. You get in there at nine o'clock, watch a three hour movie, come out just in time for lunch. A lot of great restaurants right around there. Make it make a day of it. Farmers Market is open now. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Go yes. out there and eat a vegetable or something. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, you know, what the heck? Um, or but the, be a vegetable. Uh, well, I, 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 I can't be any other way. Okay. Um, but the uh, uh, the thing that's cool too about the classic movies is, I mean, My Fair Lady that was made back in. Uh, 40? I think it's, 57? No, 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 I think it's a little later. Was it the 60s? Uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, it was a long time ago. And it's Audrey Hepburn Harvard. and, and Rex Harrison, though, right? however. And that goes back a ways. Yes. And, and yes. But, I mean, where else do you get a chance to actually see that on the big screen again? Yeah, you can you can rent a DVD or find it on oh, Netflix yeah. or something, but man, to see it on a big old screen with uh, the great sound system they have there, I think that'd be super. 1964. 64. 64. I was five years yeah. old. Yeah. And we won't ask you how and, old you were. And no, please don't. Okay. And the the <laughs> thing about My Fair Lady is that it the the costumes and the sets mm -hmm. were just so stunning. Um, Richard Avedon, uh, you know, we used to we we who were older used to follow his photography. Um, and, and, and that they, was after they were etching it in the rocks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Really. But Audrey Hepburn is so exquisite. Mm, truly. And Rex Harrison played uh, the part on Broadway. And there were people who said he was too old to play it in the movie, and um, no, they just had to have him. I mean, there's nobody but he who could play Professor Iggins. Professor Iggins. Yes. Uh, very Henry interesting. Iggins. And my fair lady, a snobbish phonetics professor, agrees to a wager that he can make a flower girl presentable in high society. And Audrey Hepburn, I have to say, yeah, she's, she was a hottie. Oh, she was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's again playing uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock. You get in for just five bucks. Check it out on the big screen. It'll be a fun way to spend the morning and, uh, you know, get you off the streets and all that kind of good stuff. Right. And they had comedic actors back in the day who were in that movie. Stanley Holloway, who was oh. very, very famous, and he sings that wonderful song, I'm getting married in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, Take yeah. Take on the bells are going to chime. Oh, okay. that sounds like fun. So Wonderful. You have a chance to hear all the great music and uh, see all of that on the big screen. And now uh, uh, we have to take a fast break. When we come back, there's a couple of new movies uh, starting today at the Sawmill Theaters that you're going to want to see. Uh, one of them, great for the kids. Another one, maybe not much so, but uh, I bet you a bunch of other people are going to want to see it. We'll tell you all about those coming up right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Rim Country Forum. Uh, it looks like about 18 and a half minutes past 9 o'clock. 73 degrees right now at the Radio Wrench. Talking with your hometown movie guys in the studio this morning. Uh, Craig, Tina, and Andy with us. And, and uh, now there's two other movies we need to let you know about that are starting today at the Sawmill Theater. And uh, uh, one of them is the story about uh, Elton John uh, in a, a musical fantasy about the fantastical human story of Elton John's breakthrough years. And, He's kind of a wild and crazy guy on a number of different levels, and I guess this movie is going to kind of take us through some of that uh, uh, yes. history. It, yeah, this, this is rated R, mm -hmm. um, so kind of you know, it's, it's interesting. brace yourself for that. I, I actually uh, uh, used to really, especially in his early years, really loved Elton John's music. He started out really kind of writing more like country music. When you look back, his very first album was 11, 17, 70, and the next one after that was Tumbleweed Connection, especially Tumbleweed Connection, very country-ish type of uh, uh, music there. And then, uh, you know, he, I think by the time he got uh, along to, well, Captain Fantastic, uh, he started getting into the real flamboyant uh, right. stuff. And, and this movie will give you the background. I understand that he actually collaborated on this movie, so chances are, as opposed to some movies that uh, Tina has a lot of angst for, um, this one might actually, hopefully, be based more on historical yeah, fact yeah. rather than, oh, let's tell him we did this, that'll sure, be fun. Sure. Well, you know, any time you're going to make a movie, you're going to have some artistic license sure. taken. Uh, you know, I think very seldom is real life, you know, as interesting as, as well. Obviously, you can make up stuff that's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, Elton John's uh, interesting enough. But in uh, yeah, reality, yeah, with, 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 with Elton John, yeah, we might not be that too much. Well, yeah. I mean, definitely. Uh, I used uh, to be a mis mixed martial arts uh, uh, competitor, yeah, right. uh, and if you believe that, I have some swampland in Idaho for you. I mean, whatever you think of Elton John, you know, he, he was definitely a uh, uh, kind of an iconic character. Oh, oh and, and, monster talent. Yeah. Super, super talent. Yeah. And and he and Bernie Taupin, I mean, they were, uh, you know, a number of different stories that I've read where they were kicking out 
you know, just vast numbers of songs every day, uh, thinking that, you know, just playing the numbers, if, if we do this many a day, we're bound to get, you know, at least, uh, you know, two good ones a week or something like that, that they, and so that they were just uh, cranking out the tunes. Um, but, you know, it went down some strange paths, too, because on the uh, uh, Captain Fantastic album, I believe, there's one called uh, Solar Prestige Egamon. It's all nothing but gibberish, and there's different fish types uh, worked into the gibberish all the way through. means nothing, but it's actually a pretty snappy little tune. Apparently he was doing mountains of cocaine, so that, that would, could have that had, do it. had some effect there. And, uh, you know, just think, what, what the kid's name that plays Elton John? Uh, uh, what's his name? The kid that plays Elton John, the actor. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Taron, Taron, uh, 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 Egerton. Taron Egerton. There we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah. 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 Sorry. You know what? And, and actually, I just thought of this too. I, I kind of forgot about that. But in uh, The Kingsman, The Golden Circle, mm -hmm. uh, Elton John was actually in that movie mm -hmm. with, with the, the the kid that plays him. Really? So uh, maybe that's where they actually met and. Huh. Uh, that's the I've start of this, the, where they were talking to each other and, and decided. I've, I've seen the trailer of the movie, and he does have kind of a striking resemblance the way they they make him up in this movie. Well, to, uh, Elton John, I guess, wanted this kid to play, yeah. wanted him to play him. Well, wow, very interesting. So, uh, uh, and again, it, it goes through all of the different uh, trials, tribulations, and strange choices that uh, that Elton made over the years, and and uh, and recovered mm -hmm. from many of those. Yes. Yeah, uh, apparently he's been uh, uh, clean and sober for uh, many years now, so he's oh. put all that all that uh, stuff behind him. So mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Yeah, It's uh, rated R. It plays at 115, 415, and 715. Again, rated R, so don't take the little ones there. Uh, mm -hmm. Some subject matter that probably ought not be shared with young ones. Uh, exactly. And uh, uh, Dexter Fletcher, Fletcher the, uh, the director, of course he's an Englishman, Elton John's an Englishman. Mm -hmm. uh, Taron uh, Egerton is an Englishman. So it's this is an English, English production. Well, I bet there's a lot of tea involved in the making of this movie. I, I'm sure there was. Yeah. Mm. Maybe a crumpet. Ah. <laughs> and, a and, 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 and why do people like scones? I mean, I have no idea. I think they're fun. I like ones with like blueberries and stuff in them. Um, <laughs> Give me a piece of pie. <laughs> um, anyway, but a, a, a little known. Um, uh, fact that uh, I, I just discovered uh, this morning, as a matter of fact, and I'm anxious to try it on Tina because uh -oh. uh, she is the expert. Um, director uh, of Rocket Man, uh, Dexter Fletcher, was brought in to another very popular movie uh, just recently because the director got fired off of the set wow. uh, and he brought, was brought in to finish up. Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Yes, well, and and, and, and that I certainly did a bang up job at the box office. Yes, and oh, and, plus and, the, and even though the I, I was cranky, even everything. though I was cranky, I really loved that movie. I saw it yeah. three times wow. in the theater. You start to get the hang of it there towards the end. I loved it. Wow. I loved it. Yeah. That was. I actually watched that myself, and I thought that was pretty darn good. Yeah, movie. and yeah. Remy was amazing. Yep. Yeah. And by, by the third time, she was humming some of the tunes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, uh, just not, the, the critics have liked this film also. Really? Uh, it's at a 72 on Metacritic. So. Oh, wow. Good. Do we have any idea what they spent uh, to to make that? Andy, oh, the keeper of the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, but we do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Forty million bucks. So not a not a big budget film. No, it's kind of a kind of a mid budget, right. I guess. Uh, uh, not a lot of special effects, but I'm sure they they put a lot of effort into the uh, the sound. And much like Bohemian Rhapsody, I mean, the, you know, the big focus on the music and everything. And and gosh, how could you go wrong? I mean, he had so many great hits throughout the years that uh, it's, oh, yeah. it's bound to be cram packed full of great tunes. I I sure hope so. That I'm going to go see that uh, today at 1:15 at the mm -hmm. Sawmill Theater. And I certainly hope uh, and expect that it'll be crammed with uh, great music. You're gonna like wear some flamboyant glasses to see it, or? Uh, He's already wearing the sweatshirt for Pete's sake. Yeah, I'm wearing, I'm wearing my space kitty cat uh, sweatshirt. That seems um, like something straight out of a Jimi Hendrix movie. <laughs> uh, <Okay>. Those were <laughs> the days. Yeah, uh, spelled D A Z. <laughs> yes. Uh, I do have some uh, in, right in, in my car. I have some nice uh, American flag sunglasses. Oh, there you go. That'll uh, work. Uh, maybe in the next break I'll go get them so you <laughs> can see. Uh, but this, uh, the music uh, produced by uh, uh, Tapin and, and uh, uh, Elton 
John, is, as you said, there's, there's just dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of songs that these two guys collaborated on, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of them are just great. Mm -hmm. and do, were, do you remember uh, a Tiny Dancer? Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Oh, That's El off Elton, the Mad Men Across the Water album. Yeah. Elton John wrote that uh, as a, a wedding gift to one of his uh, roadies or, or band members, uh, Mary some girl, mm -hmm. and uh, he wrote the song about this girl. Nice. And uh, what, a, what a wonderful gesture. I mean, how would you like to, as a wedding present, have, have your wife get a, a, a Nelton John song written about her? That'd just be yeah. great. Yeah. And I remember uh, back in the, it would have been in the 70s sometime, there was a movie called Friends that Elton John wrote the soundtrack to, and, and he actually has an album called Friends. The, the movie, I don't think, ever made it big. I saw the movie, and I thought it was, it was pretty cool as a kid. But uh, um, he did some, and when it comes to unusual uh, pieces of music, off of the Goodbye to Brick Road album, he did one. Uh, it, the first half of it is is uh, well, the funeral for a friend is all just instrumental, and it starts off kind of you know strange and creepy. But I mean, it, it, they get into some significant wailing away on the keyboard, and then that rolls into Love Lies Bleeding, another song that it's tied to. But really, uh, I have no idea. What the motivation is behind that, but it might be kind of interesting in this movie. We might get a little bit of background on uh, where some of the motivation came from for these different songs. It'd be kind of fascinating. And, and some of the songs are, are have just become cultural icons, like that "Candle in the Wind." Sure. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, and then he rewrote that when Princess Diana died. And I, I kind of, right. I kind of like the the revision better than the original myself. But he, he did yeah. a great job. Yeah. And this is your song. Oh yeah, your I song. Mean, oh you know, boy, yeah. When, when we were young and we first heard that, that my first thought was, who is this guy? I mean, <laughs> I remember listening to him on AM radio when I was driving. It was a kind of a long distance to uh, one of my first jobs, and just I, I can close my eyes and picture where I was on the highway where, right. when this came on. You know, just an amazing. I've song. seen him in concert three times, wow. and uh, another one of the tunes that became a big hit. Benny and the Jets. Yes. Um, that's another one off the Goodbye to Elbrick Road album that uh, I still don't really know what that song is about. Um, <laughs> and one of the things he was criticized about... it's an about, earworm. You'll hear yeah, well, yeah. Now you've mentioned it, it, and I it, have it in my head. There you go. Yeah. And, and one of the things that's kind of uh, uh, interesting in his early years, there were a lot of complaints that people couldn't understand what he was saying. Mm -hmm. um, he had kind of a different... Uh, and it wasn't just a British accent, he had just kind of a different twang to the way he spoke. Articulation. Um, yeah, that, that's a good word to use. Much better than twang when it comes sure. to Elton But then a twang articulation. <laughs> Would that be a twangulation? Or a twang, yeah, oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Craig mentioned how uh, Elton John <clears throat> appeared in uh, uh, the, one of the King's Men's movie with the, right. uh, the guy that's playing uh, Elton John in, in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you have to keep in mind that Elton John is an actual Oscar winner right. uh, mm -hmm. for uh, the, his uh, music for uh, The Lion King. Well, one other plug that i got to make on an Elton John song that I don't think it ever became uh, super big, um, and I'm trying to remember which album it came off of. It might have been Elton John, Elton John, the same album that had uh, your song on it originally. Um, but uh, it was called 60 Years On. And it was a very melancholy song about, you know, and the, the line from it is, I have no wish to be living 60 years on. My guess would be, he's changed his tune on that one. Um, <laughs> I used to like it too until I turned 60. Now it's like, oh, kind of creepy. Uh, apparently he's, uh, he's quite happy uh, living a, a quiet life with his family now. Yeah, good for him. Good. And one other movie that, uh, well, let's see, before we get to the one other movie we need to talk to, we have a caller on the line, and we don't like to lose calls here on Rim Country Forum because Andy's here. So let's go to the phones. <laughs> Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Thanks for calling. Oh yeah. Boy, I'm, that's, I'm drawing a blank on that one, but uh, he, he wrote such great stuff. Any other songs of his that really stand out as being, uh, you know, superior works? Oh yeah, it's oh, off the Tumbleweed Connection album right also. Yep. Yeah, that is a good one. And 
Oh, well, there are so many on that. Uh, uh, Talking Old Soldiers is also on that one. And to me, I mean, he does a great job. The idea is, uh, you know, you got a couple old soldiers that meet in a bar and they're uh, talking about how they, you know, all of their buddies are, have passed on. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a very melancholy song. But he does a great job, both uh, uh, vocally, the, the lyric writing from Bernie Taupin, and then also uh, uh, just the, uh, uh, the, the piano. I think really good stuff. Appreciate the phone call. Thanks on that. Um, Ah, there's so many different songs when it comes to Elton John that we could talk about. But um, one other quick movie we got to let you know about before we take a, a break for uh, weather here. Uh, another movie that starts today at the Sawmill Theaters, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. A cryptozoological agency monarch faces off against a battery of god-sized monsters, including the mighty Godzilla who collides with Monthra, Rodan, and his ultimate nemesis, the three-headed... Uh, what the heck is this? King Ghidorah. Um, man, that, uh, I, you know, I, I look back at what, as a kid, you know, back in the Dark Ages, uh, the Godzilla movies and, uh, you know, all of that stuff came out of Japan and it looked like it was, you know, maybe just a step above claymation at the, at the best. But, oh, yeah. Uh, but really this, this, this looks like it's got some pretty high-tech, uh, you know, uh, eye candy. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, uh, uh, when I was little, uh, World Beyond. Oh, yeah, and, uh, Saturday mornings. Yeah, Saturday yeah, yeah, mornings. Yeah, yeah. They had all those Godzilla movies, and, and they did. They would just, look like they could stuff a person in a suit and you know, run around, and, and, and some of those things were pretty hokey. As I recall, in Phoenix as a kid, uh, World Beyond came on either uh, shortly before or shortly after, uh, what was the other one? The, the Outer Limits. Outer Limits, yeah. 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 All that stuff, yes. Trip in the past there. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, this guy, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, it's rated PG-13. Uh, plays at one, four, and seven. The four o'clock showing is in 3D. And Andy, do we know, uh, you know, what kind of money was spent on this? A substantial two hundred million dollars. Wow! So this is going to be a whole bunch different than those old uh, Japanese, like yeah, King the, Kong versus Godzilla movies from back in the guys wandering around stomping on cardboard cities. Yeah, <laughs> there you're flattened. Um, well, this Ray, sounds... Raymond Burr was in, in one of the early Godzilla movies. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Perry, uh, Perry Mason. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and I, then shortly after that, he had to take the part of Ironside because he was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I, no, from really. from the the way the uh, the movie is set up, uh, I think the movie was filmed in uh, in Japan, hmm. and then uh, uh, Raymond Burr was filmed in Burbank or someplace, and they just spliced in about three minutes of Raymond Burr talking and you know. So they could say Raymond Burr is in that movie. Yeah, yeah. so we have a, a famous, big... famous American star. Yeah, wow, interesting. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see the money on this one. You know, this is a special effects film. So uh, have you had a chance to take a uh, peek at this I, yet? I have not. I have I've not. even you seen know, the trailer on this. Oh yeah, I've seen the trailers. I, you know, this is a popcorn movie. Right. Uh, you know, a summertime popcorn film. Uh, a great one to go. But a two hundred million dollar budget. So, this is a serious. I mean, this well, is like caramel kind of, corn. Yeah. Well, they're kind of throwing all these monsters into it. You know, Rodan, Mothra. You're, you're right. getting all these mixed in, so it, it's going to be a, 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 a visual spectacle for sure. Very and, interesting. And uh, made seven million dollars last night, so it's it's just already in one night. Seven million. Wow. Cool. And. Uh, the director uh, Guy Ritchie is known for uh, his uh, um, flamboyant uh, effects, so uh, you know, we can expect we can expect some unusual things uh, to happen here. Uh, not just kind of your regular stuff, but uh, even even better than regular stuff. Oh, better than regular! You gotta like that. Hey, we got, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say uh, it does. It looks really neat. There's a in one of the trailers you see Rodan flying and. These jets come in and fire missiles at him, and he, he does his barrel roll and kind of dodges the missiles. And wow. so yeah, you know, like you said, you're going to have the special effects. You're going to be there. You're going to see him. The, the two hundred million dollars, you're going to know where they put that money. Wow, very interesting. That's from Sony, right? <laughs> uh, no, this is uh, Warner Brothers. Oh, it's Warner Brothers. Yes, interesting. All right, well, we're going to take a fast break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to find out uh, uh, not only a little bit more about the, all the good things happening at the Sawmill Theaters, but we're also asking the question this morning. What's your favorite comedic actor? Who's rather your favorite comedic actor of all time? Give us a ring, 474-2427. We'll be back with more right after this. 23 minutes now in front of 10 o'clock, 73 degrees, talking with your hometown movie guys. We have Tina, Andy, and Craig with us in the studio and uh, taking calls from you at 474-2427. Asking uh, this morning, uh, who is your favorite comedic actor of all time? And uh, I think we have a caller on the line. Hi, you're on Room Country Forum. Good morning. Oh, hey. fabulous. <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, I, I think you're about to, yes. Wait, wait, wait a second. Okay. There's ballet in John Wick's movie? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, and really good ballet. Huh. Yeah. 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 All right. So what's your question for Tina? Uh -huh. Oh. oh. It is indeed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they did, actually. Yeah, and I, I can't remember who played the uh, Eliza Doolittle, but. Um, yeah, but that you're right about that. That is a that was a a, a black and white 1930s movie with. So it's a, a movie about someone that mailed a pig. What was this all about? No, 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 Pygmalion. <laughs> yeah, see, she knows her history here. Right. And uh, well, you don't even want to know, mm. you know. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, from Monty Python? List, definitely. Yep. I'll do it. See you, see you tomorrow at the movies. Right. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. And uh, interesting, interesting. Now, and, and she mentioned uh, Leslie Howard, uh, mm -hmm. which reminded me that in uh, uh, Rocket Man, uh, there is a, an actress whose name is uh, uh, Dallas Bryce Howard. Right. I don't think she's connected to Leslie Howard, but she is the... She's connected to Ron Howard. She's the daughter of yeah. Ron Howard. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, and you, you might remember her, people might remember her from the recent uh, Jurassic World movies. Yes. Uh, so it's a, a fine actress in a, uh, from a very talented family. Well, mm -hmm. they didn't name her Miss Opie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so we're asking this morning, too, your favorite comedic actor. And I, I've got to say, at the very top of my list, has got to be Robin Williams. Absolutely. I mean... Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't know how you wouldn't like him as a as a, a comedic actor. Came to to uh, prominence to begin with, I believe, as the part that he played in the TV sitcom uh, uh, Mork from Ork. Yeah. And I mean, he had me right then. It was just this weird, high energy, uh, a bunch of nonsensical weirdness. But he he pulled it off really well. Well, as we were discussing before the show, he actually was diagnosed with Tourette. Crap. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you said worse. Yeah, I know. And, uh, he, uh, was <laughs> and and uh, he was on the cover of Tourette's magazine way back in the day, in earlier times. But his he channeled his uh, you know almost inability to hold back into such brilliant. Uh, Improvisational stuff. I mean, the sometimes he I, went completely yeah. off script and it was still absolutely oh, hilarious. The stuff. first time I saw him was on the Dick Cavett show uh -huh. where he came on and he just improved a whole faux Shakespeare riff. He put this uh, handkerchief on his head with four corners tied, you know, kind of like a like one of the caps of the Shakespearean characters, right. and he let loose and I was I was laughing and my mouth was down to my knees. I couldn't right. believe this. Who is this guy? Yeah. Just amazing. Very, very yeah. talented, talented guy. It had to be, yeah. had to be a lot of things going on there for him to be able to be who he was. Yes. Uh, and of course, he struggled with depression very quietly uh, and, and used humor to rise above that in a lot of ways. But he also had some serious parts. But man, yeah. uh, as a as a, com uh, a you know a, a comedy guy, I just thought he was uh, outstanding. Yeah. We got another caller on the line at uh, 18 now in front of the hour. Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Thanks for waiting. Hi there. 
Yeah. Ah, uh, you know. Thank you. And, and we were, you know, just before the show today, I was I was making a list, and I, I realized after I'd gone down my list a little bit that I was all guys, and we were talking out in the lobby here about, you know, the, some females have got to be in here, and of course those two, Lucille Ball and Carol Burnett, uh, you know, came to uh, uh, came up almost immediately. But they were great in a lot of ways. I don't think anyone that's familiar with Lucia Ball uh, can think of her in a comedy role without uh, uh, remembering the scene from the I Love Lucy show where she's working in the candy factory. Yes. I mean, that, that's just a, it's an iconic <laughs> little bit of footage there, but uh, really good stuff. And then Carol Burnett, you know, with her uh, uh, weekly show, and, uh, and, and it goes right into another one of my favorite uh, uh, comedians who just recently passed away, and that's... Uh, Thank God, just like that, his name escapes me. Tim Conway. Tim Conway, yeah. Right. Um, and, you know, he was just absolutely hilarious. And he was another one that often went off script and, and just did improvisation, which would cause, uh, on this you know live tape show, would cause some of the other uh, actors to just bust up laughing. Well, and Harvey Corman always had a hard time keeping a straight face. And, of course, he's a great comedian uh, actor. Sure. And then we need to, to really acknowledge Vicki Lawrence, who, along with Carol Burnett, they played off each other mm -hmm. so well, um, and yeah. she was she was just hysterical. You know, she played Mama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, oh, there's just, there's so many good uh, comedians back there. You know, uh, uh, Don Klein, who's our cameraman in here. And by the way, if you ever want to take a look at what uh, uh, our Friday show with uh, your hometown movie guys actually looks like, we know you know what it sounds like, but. Uh, Don is in here and he, he uh, tapes this every week and then posts it up. You just have to go online and look uh, on YouTube for the Don Klein channel and that's uh, C-L-I-N-E, the Don Klein channel on YouTube and then you can actually see all the weirdness that happens sometimes even in between the, uh, during the commercial breaks which uh, you don't edit any of that out, do you? No. Oh, God. You do edit it out. I have to remember that. Huh? Yeah, I got to clean up our act here. Really? Here we got another caller on the line. Now let's check out and see what they're thinking about uh, favorite comedic actors. Hi, you're on Room Country Forum. Good morning. Thank you. I think you're right on target. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the nice thing here too is that uh, the Sawmill Theaters does so much for all these, uh, you know, different causes uh, throughout the year. And of course, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, your chance to uh, uh, go see uh, uh, Aladdin. Uh, Aladdin. Aladdin, and then uh, it's for just five bucks, and that's at uh, ten o'clock. Okay. And uh, all that, that $5 goes to uh, uh, scholarships for uh, Gila Community College uh, uh, scholarships. And then, uh, uh, I mean, you guys are always just, you're always, you know, busy getting in behind and supporting different good causes here in Rip Country. So hats off to you. I think that caller is absolutely right. All right, we'll clear the phone lines. And oh, no, he wanted to do his community Oh, yeah, pick, uh, pick it back uh, up. Call it, call back up. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey, call back. I, it's not our call. You know, Randy did it. Gonna, he did it. I'm going to use a technical term here. I screwed up. Um, anyway, back to the phones again. Hi, you're on Room Country Forum. Good morning. Oh, good. I'm glad you were able to get back in. Sorry about that. I got a little itchy with my trigger finger. He's here. trying to be comedic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> oh, Peter Sellers. Thank you. He's on my list. Ah, yes. Peter Sellers. Oh. From, a lot of people remember well, him from the Pink, Pink Panther. Yeah. And really, the Pink Panther, but you know, also Dr. Strange Love, which is in my top ten. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And hey, thank you for calling. You. And, and uh, yep. is it okay if I hang up now? Apparently so, he's going. I want to be sure. Uh, Peter Sellers did a movie called uh, The Party that is absolutely hysterical. Really? Uh, he plays uh, the part of a, of a, a movie director in Hollywood uh, from India mm -hmm. who is mistakenly invited to uh, one of these Hollywood uh, soirees right. with uh, all kinds of stars and producers and directors and everything. And it's a, a, a duck out of water uh, situation, and he is just unbelievable. Well, he could do all kinds of different voices because mm -hmm. where he started was on a show, a radio show called The Goon Show, 
which was a BBC radio show in the 50s. And because I lived in Singapore and because we got the BBC, I used to listen to the Goon Show with this little transistor radio under my covers in bed because I was not supposed to be up. The Peter Sellers, Spike Mulligan, and a couple of other guys, they, they were the precursors of the Pythons. They right. were the precursors of Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. Wow. I mean, he was just amazing. And he did so many voices on that show that you thought he was ten people. Uh -huh. And another of my favorite of his movies was Being There. Being there. Oh yeah. man, that's it's funny and not so funny. Well, and you know when you when you look back at some of these comedic actors from days gone by, I, you know I mentioned that uh, Don had handed me a note here, and, and he uh, came up with a couple that I had on my list too. Of course, Bob Hope. Yes. Um, and and any time you actually saw an interview, even when he wasn't in a movie. I have never seen anyone be able to fire off so many one-liners, one after another, after another. I mean, he was pretty amazing that way. And another one that he mentioned, and I think I, I just I completely forgot to even think about this guy, but I agree completely. George Burns. Oh, I yes, mean, it, 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 and that yes. was a that was a whole. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, but hey, Gracie, or, yeah, I was trying to think of any of the lines, but anyway, oh, he, he was wonderful. He was uh, really, really good. And I, I think uh, what was it? Uh, where he, he played. Uh, uh, God in a movie here towards the end Called of his life. Oh God! Oh God! Oh, God. oh, oh, yeah. oh that, yeah. that's why I remember the name. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, he just he had a just kind of a neat uh, way about him, and I think uh, a lot of people had a lot of respect for him. Yeah, and then if you go back to the old guys, the Marx Brothers, mm -hmm. and particularly Groucho. Remember Groucho? They they would go off script all the time. Most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Oh, uh, that's right. And he was on You Bet Your Life mm -hmm. and the the apocryphal story about how he got taken off. Ah, yes. It was that lady who came on and she, you know, they do this little riff and you know, and she, do you have? Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes, I have eight children. Eight children. She said, well, I love my husband. And he said, well, I love my cigar, but I take it out once in a while. <laughs> and he was gone. But, I mean, you know, that, that was, was not scripted. <laughs> that's <was> all she <laughs> wrote. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. But he was, he was such a bad boy, and yeah. they all were. Apparently, trying to, trying to keep the Marx Brothers in check was impossible. And Some I interesting have a, stories on Harpo, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I have a wonderful book called The Groucho Letters, which when I read it, I am laughing out loud. They're so oh. funny because he was very literate, and he wrote to everybody. Very interesting. Yeah. Hey, we have to take one more quick break. We're going to be back with more. Uh, we got another caller on the line. We're going to find out what their idea is of uh, the favorite comedic actor of all time right after this. Eight and a half minutes in front of 10, 74 degrees, looking for that high today of 83. Give you a complete look at your seven-day forecast coming up here in about uh, 12 minutes, so stick around for that. And meanwhile, this morning on Rim Country Forum, as we do on Fridays, talking with your hometown movie guys, uh, Tina Craig and Andy with us in the uh, studio. We've been asking you uh, your favorite comedic actor of all time. And uh, one of the other things that uh, Don Klein, who's here in the studio with us, also mentioned, uh, he, an actor that doesn't always play a comedic role, although he's done a lot, but Will Smith in Independence Day? Yes. Um, that was some pretty... And Welcome I, to Earth! Yeah, you like, punch <laughs> you in the face, you little goose. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there was just some good... That was a, I mean, that was a great action-packed movie, but it had a lot of great, uh, you know, silly lines in it. Where, well, and Men in Black. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The original. Yeah. You know, I know they've remade it. I'm kind of like, uh, yeah. you know, but, but really... The what, remake has Thor. Yes, I know. But but really, if you know, when, when there's that great line... Um, um, Madam, the FBI does not have a sense of humor, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, Michelle here at the station has uh, given me a, a small list. John Candy, oh, another favorite yeah. comedic actor for yeah. Chevy Chase. Yes. Um, and uh, we already said Robin Williams, but uh, Bill Murray, you know, again, yeah. made his uh, rise to fame in uh, Saturday Night Live, like a lot of these well, people the did. Blues Brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John Belushi. Um, John she, Belushi. She oh, also uh, uh, is giving uh, uh, three thumbs up, and I'm not even sure how that happens. Uh, to Jeff Dunham and uh, Ahmed the Dead Terrorist. Yes. Now, I'm uh, he's a, he's a, 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 a ventriloquist, right? But yes. This is a dummy, Ahmed. And he yeah. does a bunch of... He, yeah. but yes, he does a bunch of characters, yeah. but Ahmed the Dead Terrorist is... I kill you! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, um, now we've... Uh, let's see, we've mentioned... Uh, I don't know if I mentioned Eddie Murphy yet. Yes. But Eddie Murphy... And we should. In... Uh, uh, what was the the cop movie that he... Uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly was, Hills Cop. I mean, there was some oh. stuff in there that was just uh, gut-bustingly funny. He, he got a little darker as he got older, I mean, in, in humor, 
uh, speak in case you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, because I know I am. Um, but I mean, he, uh, uh, I just thought he was another one of these really witty, uh, you know, quick witted guys yeah. that could keep coming up with lines. Axel Foley. Yeah, the that's Lord right. Hills Club. And he does that scene where he goes into the restaurant and he switches into. Yeah, well, I think, you know, I've got herpes simplex 3, and I need to talk to the man before parts start falling off of the man. <laughs> I mean, oh, my goodness. Yeah, yes. he, he played a great role. And in then it. he also played, and one of my favorite roles is Bowfinger. Bowfinger. Well, not that. Yeah, okay. But, okay. but written by Steve Martin, who, mm -hmm. who also starred in that. And he plays two parts in that. Um, and one is, um, you know, where he's, he's this famous movie star who's, who's, who goes to a, uh, a, a sort of a new age uh, control freak situation called uh, Mindhead, hmm. which is, uh, it, it's, it's taken from Scientology. It's beautiful. It's absolutely such a sight. And uh, Steve Martin really nails a lot of Hollywood stupidity in that movie. The yeah, script is wonderful. Yeah, Steve Martin was good at uh, oh, yeah. uh, intellectual humor. Yes. Um, you know, and, and some of it, you know, if you weren't really paying attention, would probably blow right past you. But but he yeah. always had some, you know, there, there was always some interesting Ro things. Roxanne. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, which is the remake of the... Cyrano. Um, Cyrano oh. de Bergerac. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, okay, got my French uh, in uh, for the day. Uh, yeah, we got to do a, a speaking of French. Uh, yeah. They love this guy, uh, Jerry Lewis. Oh, oh Jerry Lewis. Oh, yeah. And, and, and all, the, all the Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin movies uh, for yeah. so long, and then he did a, a number of them on his own. Matter of fact, he did the first uh, Nutty Professor. Yes. Yeah. And then, of yes. course, Eddie, uh, I'm going to go back to Eddie Murphy for just a second. Yeah. And his portrayal in uh, Nutty Professor that was a remake years later, I think that was in like the late 80s, something like that, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, there's that one scene around the dinner table where he's playing all of the different parts of the people sitting around the it's table, and, and it's really exceptional. Yeah. Um, but and also pretty darn funny too. Well, we need to mention some women. Ah, yes. I mean, we would only mentioned yeah. Carol Burnett. Yes, but Lucy Phyllis Ball. Diller. Oh, there you go. Joan Rivers. Ah, uh, Joan. Yeah, talk yes. about sarcastic. Oh, I miss that woman so much. Uh, and Madeline Kahn. Right. Yes. Right. Right. And then Cloris Leachman oh, in yeah. Frankenstein, oh, who yes. play, plays Frau, Frau Blücher. There's my German for the day. Wow. <laughs> and there goes that microphone. I know, I know. We need hey, to clean that up. You know, and, and as we go back in time, there's a couple others that uh, I hadn't mentioned yet that I, I remember as a kid I got a big kick out of. One was Red Skelton. Yes. Um, I mean, he was a very a talented guy. And, and uh, but you know, uh, very conservative certainly by today's standards. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, and uh, we were talking before the show today, uh, Robin Williams' idol that he kind of uh, uh, really modeled himself after, Jonathan Winters. Yes. And I remember as a kid in the '60s, uh, uh, they, uh, Jonathan Winters had a show on TV, and I, I just always found it to be funny. He played a lot of different uh, uh, parts in it and everything, and I, I, uh, you know, characters rather. I always thought he was hilarious. He he was brilliant. Yeah, and also a man who suffered from a lot of depression, yeah. and uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I would sit down and uh, watch W. C. Fields and Mae West oh. play oh. off each other oh, yeah. uh, any any day or of the week. Or play off themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just <laughs> hilarious. Who is the guy who played in Sherlock Holmes' younger, smarter brother? Oh. Sherlock Holmes' younger, smarter yeah. brother. Is that one of the smothers? No, no, no that was. Uh, he played opposite Madeline Kahn in oh, that movie. Oh goodness, oh goodness, I can't remember. Uh, yeah. I'm drawing a blank. Yeah. Willy Wonka, The Chocolate Factory was uh, in also. Oh, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Yeah. Yeah. Gene Wilder, that's Gene Wilder. it. Gene Wilder, who was in Blazing Saddles, who was yes, in Young Frankenstein, right. and who was <laughs> in The Producers, and Zero Mustel, let's not forget, wonderful Zero. Yeah. Or uh, Fish Called Wanda. Yes. And the sequel, kind of, the, they, they had so much fun making A Fish Called Wanda, which is hysterically funny, that they brought the same cast back and put them in a zoo in London uh, in a movie called Fierce Creatures. Yes, John, all, John also, Cleese et al. Also just absolutely fall down hilarious yeah. stuff. And John Cleese, I mean, I, yeah, to me, I, they, they had me back in the Monty Python uh, yeah. and the Holy Grail, and then uh, it was uh, uh, one night a week, I don't remember what night it was, but it like, after I was supposed to be in bed, uh, I would uh, turn my TV back on and, and watch uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Circus. Uh, and it was, I mean, that was just you know, typical weird uh, off-the-wall British humor, but it was 
I just got a, a big bang out of that. And then yeah. uh, Monty Python's uh, the, Holy uh, the, the Holy Grail. The yeah. Holy Grail and um, oh, Life, Life of Brian. Life of oh, yeah. Brian. Ooh, yes. Meaning of Life. Right. Meaning of Life, yeah. yes. Uh, Those were stuff. bad boys. You yeah. love them. Yeah. What, what did he say? I think he said, blessed are the cheese makers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, you know, it's not just the cheese makers. It's, it's all of the dairy workers. <laughs> 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 no, that's good stuff, though. And so it's been kind of interesting. By the way, if you were wondering about that caller that I said was going to be sharing their favorite thing, um, they left us, and, and we're out of time. So. He's well, a comedic gotta, actor. We always got to do stick, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, we always got to lose at least one call. But uh, we appreciate the uh, hometown movie guys being with us. We look forward to them uh, being here next week. Of course, you can always find out what's playing and when it's playing at the Sawmill Theaters by just going online to sawmilltheaters.com. You can also call them at 602-377-0719. Don't forget to get down there tomorrow morning for My Fair Lady. That starts at 9 o'clock. And that special showing of Aladdin that you can get in for just 5 bucks, uh, that's tomorrow morning uh, starting at 10 o'clock at Sawmill Theaters. You've been listening to uh, Rim Country Forum on KMOG, brought to you by Banner Payson Medical Center, George Henry Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, at your service, Cleaning and Tree Service, ITD Group, Computer Services, and Anytime Fitness. You are listening to Rim Country Radio, KMOG Payson. It's 10 o'clock. Suzanne Michaels up next. Stick around after the weather. She's going to have...